Good morning to you. I am Mark Suddeth, and here's What's Up in the Tropics. It is Tuesday, the 20th of September, 2022. The Atlantic Basin now getting quite busy. Three areas here that we are keeping an eye on, of course, Fiona, Category 3 hurricane, and then Invest Area 97L, that's the area in red. That'll probably go on to become our next named storm briefly, and if so, it'll be gassed on. It'll stay out over the open Atlantic far from land. And then we're going to have to watch this area down here in yellow. If we expand over to the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook map, you can see it is orange, indicating a medium chance of development. Uh, pretty unanimous support here from the global models that this will go on to develop. And it could, I emphasize could, become a significant hurricane somewhere in the vicinity of the Western Caribbean beyond the five-day time frame. So we're going to want to watch that very closely. But first, of course, it's going to be impactful to our friends down there in the Windward Islands. We'll address that more in just a moment. In the Eastern Pacific, we have Madeline here off the coast of the Baja. It is weakening and not much of uh, any consequence there. And then a couple of other areas of disturbed weather to the south of Mexico. Looking at the track map, there's Madeline again to the south and west of the Baja Peninsula. That'll move on out to the open Pacific and die away. And then we have Fiona over here on its way to becoming eventually a Category 4 passing hopefully safely to the west of Bermuda, but that is not set in stone, as they say, just yet. We'll have to watch and see how that evolves, any track deviation, especially if we look at the consensus models to the east or to the right of that forecast track there, and Bermuda could see hurricane conditions. We'll monitor that, and then certainly later on at days four and five, we need to monitor what happens up here in Atlantic Canada, the potential for a significant impact Water temperatures up that way are well above the long-term average. They're not warm enough to sustain a hurricane, technically the warm core version of a hurricane, but as it transitions to a large extratropical system, it is going to be quite impactful, and we need to monitor that closely, just as we do for Bermuda and the Turks and Caicos today. Satellite animation, there's all of the mess, basically, in the eastern Pacific. Nothing else really seen coming from any of these systems of any Real consequence, maybe some heavy rain, of course, for Mexico. And then there is Fiona, uh, real close to Grand Turk right now, the eye wall probably over that area. And then down here, approaching the Windward Islands, that's what we're going to have to watch closely as it moves into the Caribbean. And then there's Invest Area 97L up there, uh, out over the open Atlantic. Zooming in here on Fiona, not the most well-organized hurricane, but it certainly has uh, the recon in there to measure those winds. Category 3 intensity forecast to become a Category 4 over the very warm waters of the western Atlantic. It is very close now, the western eye wall to Grand Turk. You can barely even see it in there, and it's to the east of the Turks and Caicos proper, and it'll continue to move off to the north-northwest before eventually turning north and eventually beyond that northeast, hopefully at least 100 miles west of Bermuda, but we'll have to wait and see how that pans out. And we can see that on the GFS here. This is the 6Z run. Fiona there, we'll watch that first. Again, it's real close to the Turks and Caicos. Makes that turn. How close it gets to Bermuda as the wind field expands? Well, that remains to be seen. There's still enough time for deviations to the left or to the right of the forecast track. And that could make a big difference in what Bermuda sees. This will also send out pretty big swells towards the east coast of the United States. So that's another hazard we're going to have to monitor. And then you can see... At the end of the five-day forecast period, right there, that next system getting into the Caribbean Sea, need to watch that closely. But again, first, we don't want to ignore the fact that it will impact Trinidad, Tobago, and the southern portions of the Windward Islands as a whole over the next couple of days. The last frame I want to show you here, just zooming out a little bit, where this ends up, Fiona, look at that, way up there, approaching the Gulf of St. Lawrence uh, between Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. 9.33, you know, hopefully the GFS is overdoing it, but that could be an absolutely devastating hurricane, transitioning hurricane from deep warm core, where it's deriving all of its energy from the ocean, so to speak, the warm ocean, to one that is more ocean and atmosphere and pressure differences and temperature differences. It gets a little bit more complicated, but the impacts are the same. A massive wind field, giant waves, a big surge potentially, and a lot of heavy rain. Remember, the water temperatures up this way are running quite a bit above the long-term average. So we need to see exactly where this ends up. You folks in Atlantic Canada definitely need to take notice. 
I will go over everything in more detail, of course, in the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion video. I'll have that ready for you later this afternoon. As always, thanks for tuning in to What's Up in the Tropics. I'm Mark Suddeth. I'll be back with you in a few hours from now.